What is up YouTube? It's Rules for Rebels here and in today's video we're going to be talking about VAs or virtual assistants. Um, I know a lot of you guys probably think, oh, you know, I don't have money for a virtual assistant or oh, I don't need a virtual assistant. I've been aware of the concept of virtual assistants for a while. It's only recently that I've really, really, really kind of gotten into seriously looking into it. Um, and I'm actually reading the book, The 4-Hour Workweek right now by Tim Ferriss. Uh, and he talks a lot about virtual assistants. So that's what's kind of gotten me even more interested about it. Uh, but really, I think you'd be surprised how cheap you can find virtual assistants for. I mean, I've found virtual assistants for less than $2 an hour. And then there's other ones who are as much as $50 an hour. But I think you'd be surprised the skill sets that people have who are willing to work for cheap. Like, I think a lot of people think, oh, if I want a graphic designer, if I want a logo designer, if I want a web designer, you know, it's going to be what? $30 an hour to $50 an hour, or even if I go to a third world country, probably $15 an hour, you would be surprised by how many VAs there are out there from anywhere from less than $2 per hour. Um, I would say like an average cost for somebody with, with a decent skill set is probably 6 to $8 an hour, which is still very cheap compared to here in the States. You know, most graphic designers, web designers, et cetera, want $35 an hour, $50 an hour, $100 an hour, $150 bucks an hour. Um, so this is Fiverr that we're looking at right now. Now, technically, Fiverr isn't really a virtual assistant. Um, Fiverr is more buying specific tasks. And Fiverr is a bit more organized in that Fiverr handles the payment, Fiverr handles the platform, Fiverr kind of moderates what gigs people are allowed to do. But I mean, let's just say, for example, I need somebody to install and set up a PHPBB forum for me. There's somebody to do it right here. Let's say I need a logo designed. Um, logo design there's somebody to do it. And jobs uh, jobs on here are cheap. I can get somebody to design a fairly nice logo for five bucks. I can get t-shirt designs for five bucks. But my point is these things are more task specific. So I, I hire somebody for one task. Once they complete the task, kind of our, our working together is over. Uh, virtual assistants, it's more like there are uh, somebody that you're hiring on for a full time, not full time necessarily, but a long time position. And there's not one specific task. They're essentially going to be your assistant just as a secretary or an assistant at a normal business would. So you can tell this, you can give this person tasks to do throughout the day. And I think you'd be surprised by the skill sets of some of these people. I'm going to show you some of these guys' profiles and things like that in, uh, in just a few minutes here. Um, but, you know, you're going to be able to find people who are, have no graphic design, web design, and content writing. Uh, you're going to have people who can book travel for you, who can pay your bills, who can do all this type of stuff. Now, personally, I would be kind of sketched out by hiring some foreign person that I've never met to, you know, and, and giving them my credit card numbers or whatever else. Surprisingly, it's, it's actually fairly safe if you're with a reputable company. Um, you know, the, the security steps that, that these uh, organizations who provide virtual assistance go through, like background checks, nobody's allowed to leave the office with any paperwork, et cetera. So it's kind of hard for people to steal your credit card information, social security number, et cetera. There are a lot of people out there who basically hire VAs to manage their personal and professional lives. And these people have all their passwords to everything, their credit card number, their banking info. Personally, I don't really trust that. And quite honestly, I don't even necessarily know that I trust somebody going into like the back end of like my main e-commerce website and things like that. But for smaller tasks like uh, um, graphic design, web design, content creation, backlinks, just kind of doing that routine kind of maintenance type stuff that, you know, affiliate marketers or e-commerce professionals need to do. That's very time consuming, um, but isn't really sensitive or critical to the workings of your business. I would definitely trust these guys with, with something like that. So let's go through and look at a couple of these guys. Um, and, and the site that I'm going through now, you can get virtual assistance through Upwork and Elance. I think they might actually be the same thing now. Uh, this is actually onlinejobs.ph where you're hiring a Filipino uh, virtual assistant. And there's kind of kind of a service here that, that handles this, but we can kind of see their weekly salary, uh, 542 to $650. So this guy's actually kind of high price. You know, this is a price that I might pay somebody in the States. Um, we can kind of see their skill sets. Uh, they're really good with Facebook ads, email management. They're not a great project coordinator, not great at transcription, uh, good English. I would say one of the most important skills somebody could have is good English. If you're wanting to do somebody to do content writing for you, obviously you'd be looking for strong English and strong writing skills, which obviously this guy doesn't have. So um, I'm going to cross this guy off the list. <clears throat> But again, I think you'd be surprised. I found some pretty skilled workers for less than $2 an hour. Um, some of these people, they know Camtasia, Sony Vegas, Photoshop, etc. And this person's willing to work for $2.19 per hour. They're looking for full-time, 
but they'd probably take part time. They have two years of experience in video and photo editing. Uh, my ex my experience of photo editing and video editing reached two years. I have the expertise in Adobe Photoshop, and a lot of times when you read their skill summary you can kind of get a better idea of their English. So even if somebody says that they're five-star in English, read their skill summary and see if it makes sense. Um, you know, see if it, it's good English and things like that. I have two years of experience, I would say, in video editing, in video and photo editing. This person says of. So you can see their English is a little bit off here. Um, I may actually save that one. That one's somewhat interesting. Uh, let's see. we got another applicant here. Okay, this person's going to work for 4.452 to 5.42 an hour. They have 10, 10 years in customer service. So I'm guessing this person isn't going to be as skilled in um, web design, graphic design, etc. It's probably going to be more uh, secretarial and customer service duties. They do have good English, so that's a strong skill. A lot of times you may be willing to take somebody who has good English over somebody with other skills just because uh, the communication between the two of you... Um, as well as their writing skills like that are, are gonna gonna be important. Um, let's see here, you know, get rid of that one. And I'll just I'll just scroll through a couple more here, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of like what people are are willing to work for and the skill sets that they possess. And and from what I've heard, you should try to narrow it down. I, I've yet to you know I've used a lot of Fiverr and, and hired a lot of people for jobs, uh, but I think people who are having a lot of success online are the people who are really good at delegating uh, various tasks that. Uh, you know, take up a lot of time and isn't really that difficult or complicated, but just take up a lot of time. And if you can pass those tasks off to somebody else, um, you free up a lot of your time to, to work on more, um, you know, revenue generating type tasks. So this guy's willing to work for 339 to 406 an hour. And look at the, these guys have bachelor's degrees. I've seen a lot of guys who have uh, master's degrees, uh, people who know C++, Ruby, Rails, etc. So I mean, look at this guy's willing to work for three bucks an hour. Um, he knows CSS, HTML, uh, he's an expert in WordPress, customer service, tech support, um, not really good at research and things like that. Speaking skills, not the best, not really a great blogger. Um, that guy's fairly interesting as well. Um, I'm going to go through one more of these and then we'll kind of cut. I just kind of want to give you guys a, a preview of what these people do. So 271 to 339, three years experience. What, what, what does she uh, work with? Microsoft applications, data entry, customer service, phone support, appointment status. So this person is going to be more like an overall secretary than they are going to be probably uh, helpful to you in working with your affiliate marketing or graphic design. One other thing I'd, I'd suggest watching out for, when somebody's skill summary is just bullet points as opposed to an actual introduction of themselves or something like that. That typically tells me that their English isn't the best. Uh, so let's go down here and see what this person rates their uh, their English at. Oh wow, they actually rate themselves very good. So maybe she does speak, you know. I, I may uh, kind of open up a conversation and, and see how well they speak. But um, I would say English speaking um, and somebody that you can communicate with easily is probably more important than the skill sets that they possess. Uh, but I think you'd be surprised, you know, rather than going to Fiverr and hiring one guy to do your graphic design and one guy to do this, you may be able to find somebody on here who has an overall skill set that can basically help you run your business. And, you know, you could have this person two hours a day for six dollars, three hours a day for nine dollars. Um, so I'm uh, about to embark on this journey of hiring a virtual assistant. I think I'm going to hire a virtual assistant for maybe... Uh, probably starting out three to six hours a day, um, and if it works out and if it winds up making me money, uh, I'll continue to um, use them more, and I may even hire multiples. This site, it's uh, onlinejobs.ph. Uh, you can post a job. The one thing that kind of annoys me about this site, it's uh, if you guys have ever been on a, a dating site, it kind of reminds me of that. So you know a lot of sites, oh, free to sign up, free, you know, free site, free dating site, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as you sign up, it's like, okay, you can sign up, you can create a profile, you can browse people. Oh, but by the way, you're not allowed to message people, and when people message you, you can't see your message or respond to it. So it's like, really, what's the point of the, you know what I mean? How is that a free site? Like, it's essentially a paid dating site, and you're trying to tease people into uh, signing up for it. So this site is kind of similar, um, because when I click a job here, um, and the person comes up, I have no way of contacting them. Uh, so I, I thought it is, you know, they say it's free. It's not truly free. The service, I believe it's $50 a month. Uh, let's double check here. 
So the free service, you're basically allowed to post a job and view workers' profiles, but basically not able to do anything else. If you actually want to be able to hire workers and correspond with workers, you're going to have to pay them $49 a month. Now, hopefully this would be a one-time fee. You know, Hopefully in a month time, uh, you can find a VA who's going to work for you and your business, and you can sign up for this for one month, find your VA, and then cancel, and you're only out $49. Bucks. It's not like this is going to be a recurring $49 that you're going to have to pay every month. If you think it's going to take longer than a month to find somebody, you may want to go for the quarterly plan here, which is $89, but I think you should be able to find somebody in a month. Uh, you can find somebody, test them out for two weeks, and uh, if they don't wind up working out, you've still got another, uh, you know, week or two to uh, to find somebody else and go through again so uh, definitely check this out hiring a virtual assistant uh, you can find them like i said for less than two dollars um, or for as much as fifty dollars but check out uh, onlinejobs.ph and uh, upwork i'll probably make another video on upwork as i have another campaign um, running on there where i'm looking for a va and that site truly is free. You can actually contact and uh, correspond with people. So what do you guys think? Have you ever hired a virtual assistant? And if so, what was your experience? If you have, leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button to the bottom left of the video. And if you have any questions about hiring a VA or how this stuff works, um, feel free to leave a comment below, and uh, I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys.